While waiting for a septic inspection, I spent a couple of days using the mini excavator to take out a sizable chunk of earth out of the slope of the back section of our property. Here's a before picture. For reference, keep an eye on these two trees. Here's the area a couple of days later. I ended up making a five foot cut in the slope. You can see my grade stake showing the area is fairly level at this point. I also staked out the corners of the building. After a little more grading and tinkering with building dimensions and orientation, I was ready to dig out, out the foundation trench. Here I've staked and painted the outside perimeter of the trench. It'll be about 18 inches wide and 12 to 18 inches deep. I want the trench to slope slightly from the corner closest to the camera to the one furthest away. From that far corner, I'll install a French drain to move any water that makes it into the rubble trench. So the corner close, closest to the camera is about 12 inches below ground level, while the far one is 16 to 18 inches. After cleaning up a bit, I put down landscape cloth to keep dirt from infilling the rubble trench. I also put in a 4 inch perforated corrugated pipe to help move water along. Here's the T at the lowest point of the foundation trench. From here the pipe slopes down about 20 feet to a dry well. More on the dry well in a couple of minutes. I had five yards of three inch river rock delivered. River rock is rounded, so it creates a lot of space for water to infiltrate. The mini skid steer made quick work of filling in the trench. I tamped the rock down as I went along. I was about two yards of river rock shy, which I ended up moving via shovel and wheelbarrow, which took about five times as long as moving the first five yards did. So here's a dry well just before I'm about to cover, cover it over with earth. It's about 20 feet away from the foundation and about a foot below the bottom of the rubble trench. The four inch corrugated pipe runs into a five gallon bucket. The bucket has holes drilled in it and is surrounded by river rock. I ran out of landscape fabric so I use an old tarp to keep dirt from infilling the rock. This video testing the drywall is a little out of time sequence. So I'll put more corrugated drain pipe in the berm that will tie, tie into the pipe where the water hose is now. I like to terminate my French drains like this with a five gallon bucket with a screw off lid because it keeps the opening clear of dirt, debris, small animals, and insects to some degree. The concrete gray beam is eight inches wide by approximately eight inches high. The forms are two by eights fastened together with screws. I have two identical 100 foot tape measures I use to check the diagonal links to square up the forms. To secure the forms, I use these outriggers made with 2x4 scraps staked down with concrete form stakes. I like the outriggers because it makes it easy to adjust the level of the forms. It also makes it easier to remove the stakes after the concrete has been poured. I installed two runs of 1 half inch rebar to reinforce the concrete. Where two pieces met, there is a 20 inch overlap. I used two steel pipes to make the 90 degree bends for the corners. To maintain the 8 inch grade beam width, I fastened 8 inch, eight inch sections of pressure treated 2x4s between the inner and outer form boards. I also drilled holes in each spacer board for the 10 inch anchor bolts. I could remove the spacer boards after the concrete cures and, and more of the opening, but I'm planning to leave the, them in, in the foundation. I elevated the rebar sections by tying them off the spacer boards with baling wire. 
The rebar is at least two inches away from each surface. Just after pouring the concrete, we'll unwrap the baling wire and push it into the concrete while it's still wet. For the poor, I was able to round up some of the usual victims. You may recognize them from some of the, my previous videos. I calculated that we needed about 50, 80 pound bags of ready mix concrete. Here are those calculations. Here Gene's using a reciprocating saw without a blade to vibrate the forms of the air bubbles to rise out of the concrete. My dad is working the concrete down and around the rebar. I can only carry 25 bags of concrete on trailer, so mid four I had to run over to the hardware store and get the rest. Even with that delay, we finished in about four hours. A few days later, I removed the forms and I can confirm my claim that using the outriggers made it easy to remove the stakes. The only stake I couldn't get out was one I'd, I'd attached directly to the forms. I have forgotten to rub oil on the inside of the forms, but the outside ones came off easily. One of the inside one forms was so wedged in, I had to cut off the end with a reciprocating saw, but apart from that, everything came off pretty easily. Thanks for watching. I'll post links to the foundation videos I found helpful in the video notes. Next video for the Earthburn Cottage will be framing. See you then. Oh, and here are costs.